Okay, so now we're going to take a look at some calculus. Okay, uh, I'm going to break this up into a few lectures. Uh, I want to take a look at um, some of the, the basis of calculus here. I want to take a look at uh, polynomials. I want to look at a couple of rules that go along with it, which are called addition, product, and quotient rules. I'm going to take a look at a couple of uh, uh, trig situations and exponential functions. Um, what we're going to focus on is what's called differential calculus. Okay, there's another half of um, calculus that uh, we're going to take a look at a little bit later on, which is called um, interval calculus. So now let's take a look <clears throat> at what differential calculus is. The basic idea, and, and what you're trying to do in all of this with differential calculus, okay, in, in, to a mathematician, really what you're saying is you're trying to find the slope of something. Okay. And really what you're trying to do when you're trying to find a slope is see how one variable reacts to the change of another variable. Now, we can use non-calculus methods. However, we can't take a look at instantaneous moments if we don't look at calculus. Okay? So we, we look at calculus to see how one variable changes with another instantaneously. Okay, so we're looking at instantaneous changes. So let's take a look at a situation where we wouldn't use calculus and then uh, so that we can see um, how we would do it when we need to use calculus. Okay. Um, so let's just take a look at a basic example first. So let's just say I have something that looks like this. I've got a, let's call it X and Y. Not worry about time or anything like that. Okay. And we've got a function, the straight line. That should be a straight line. So now, if we wanted to take a look at the change in how x changes, the x component changes with the y component, okay, it's not very hard. Okay? If I take a look at here and here, okay, this variable changes here with the y. And changes like that. So this would be my change in x right here. This would be my change in y. If I look at the ratio of those two, the slope would equal that change in y over the change in x. No big deal. If I did it over here, because this is a straight line over any interval, so I'll make this a small interval, Okay, this ratio, this now is my change in x for this part. I'll call this delta x2. I'll call this delta y2. Okay, the slope there would equal change in y2 over change in x2. Well, because this is a straight line, that slope is always the same. And if I looked at an instantaneous change right there, no difference. Okay, that that change in y over change in x, this ratio is the same all the way through, all the way along this line, that slope is the same. Okay? We don't need calculus for that. We can solve that very well. We've got a lot of uh, good tools to solve that. Okay? So we can put that mathematically. Um, delta y over delta x would equal delta y2 over delta x2. I should point out, that delta y does not equal delta y2. We see here that this is bigger than that. We see here that delta x2 is smaller than delta x. Okay? Delta y doesn't equal delta y2. Delta x doesn't equal delta x2. It's the ratio that has to remain the same. So now, let's take a look at a situation where it's not the same, where that integral isn't always the same. So now, I'm going to start off here, bend down, and go up like that. Okay? So now, here's my graph. Okay? If I take a look at the interval between, say, right here, and the interval over here. Okay? 
if I make this my delta, my um, initial point, my final point, okay, make the line between the two, okay, the average change between here and here can be found with the slope. That is definitely true. However, this slope is somewhat positive. If I did it right over here, at this point, it's bending down. Okay, This would be pointing down. My change at this location is not the same as the change over this whole interval. Right here, I know it's zero. My change at this location is not the change that we have over here. About right here, that averages about what this is. Okay, if I, if I did it right here. But if I did it right here, well now, this slope is much greater than the slope of this one. So now I have to come up with some sort of alternative method in order to figure out what the slope is at, say, this location right here. Okay. So what we're going to do is use calculus. And we have to use something called limits. Now, I'm not going to get into a big lengthy discussion of limits, but limits are interesting when you get a value where it would be 0 over 0. And let me show you what I mean. So now, let's just say I do this right here. Take that off, take that off, take that off. Don't need this. So now, between here and here, okay? It's almost a straight line right there. It's not quite, okay? The slope through those two points would be like that. So now, I could do I'm going to call this point X, and I'm going to call this interval delta X. So this is at X plus delta X, okay? So this interval right here is delta X. This is at X, so if this is, let's just say that interval is 1. Let's just say that X here is 5. So this would be at 5 and 6, okay? x would be 5, x plus delta x would be 6, okay? We don't need the actual numbers, okay? We're just trying to model here. We want the general situation. So now, my y values, this will be at y. I should use a different color. Okay. This interval right here is going to be delta y. So if this is y, this right here would be y plus delta y. Now, we can fact figure out what the slope is if we do non-calculus. I don't want to use m. Physicists don't like using m for slope because, well, m is mass. Slope is going to equal my change in y my delta y over delta x. Okay. Now, I'm going to say that this is y, this function is y is equal to f of x. So now my slope over that interval is equal to Okay, this is going to be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So now, right here, this is at, this is my y2, that's y plus delta y. So this is going to be f of x plus delta x. Okay. This point right here is going to be f of x. This value is x, 
So this is f of x. This value right here, the x value is x plus delta x. So my y value is f of x plus delta x. So now, this is my change in y. My change in x is going to be x plus delta x minus x. We can simplify this a little bit, okay? x minus x will equal zero, so I have f of x plus delta x, the y value at uh, x plus delta x, minus f of x, that's the y value at x, over delta x. Now, see that's all great, that's just a fancy way of doing slope, it's what we've always been doing. But what we're going to do now that makes this calculus, I'm going to squeeze this delta x down to zero. Okay, I want that interval to be zero. So now, my slope here is going to equal, and this is where we come up with limits, the limit as delta x approaches zero of f of x plus delta x minus f of x all over delta x. Now, here's the thing. If delta x actually equals zero right now, I'm left with f of x. And I'd have f of x minus f of x. That's zero. Over delta x, which is also zero. Now, zero over five is zero. Zero over 10 is zero. Zero over anything is zero. But wait, let's take a look at the over zero. 10 over zero is infinity. Five over zero is infinity. Two over zero is infinity. So what I have here is something, this is trying to tell me it's zero, this is trying to tell me it's infinity. So now what I'm trying to do here, what I'm gonna use with calculus is figure out what this zero over zero means, okay? I'm gonna take a look at a specific situation. So now I'm going to say, let's take a look at a specific example. We're going to say that my y is equal to f of x. This is going to equal x squared. So y is equal to x squared. So now, if I want to figure out what the slope is, okay, my slope is equal to the limit as delta x approaches zero of Okay, this is x plus delta x, I have to square this, okay? Because f of x is equal to x squared. So this is going to equal x plus delta x squared minus f of x, which is x squared, over delta x. So now I have to distribute Keeping the limit in there. I'm going to erase this off. I have x squared plus 2x delta x plus delta x squared. Okay, that's all this minus that minus x squared all over delta x x squared drop away. So I have the slope that is equal to the limit as delta x approaches zero of the quantity 2x delta x plus delta x squared all over delta x. Now, here's where I say we take advantage of limits. In order to figure out 
what the instantaneous change is. Now, if I plug delta x in right now, delta x is equal to zero. This would be zero plus zero over zero. Again, I'm still left with zero over zero. It's still not anything I can use. But that's not where we stop with limits. We see if there's a way that we can rewrite that equation so that we can figure out what it approaches. It doesn't actually equal it because, you know, math teachers would get very upset if I said equal it, but it's approaching this value. Well, let's cancel out delta x. Delta x there cancels out, delta x there cancels out. Cancels out the square there. So now the slope is equal to the limit of delta x approaching zero, okay, of 2x plus delta x over 1. Now, if I plug in delta x is equal to 0, if I plug in delta x is equal to 0 right now, okay, that goes away. Okay, so now I can plug this in, delta x goes to 0. I'm left with x. So now, what that means is that I can figure out the slope of y equals x squared at any location. Okay? If the location is equal to 0, I plug in 0, my slope is equal to 0. So let's take a quick look at a graph of y equals x squared. So now, right here, okay, the slope of this line here at, at this location at zero is zero. I say, all right, I want to know where the slope is. Okay, at x equals one, what does the slope equal? Well, if I plug in one, okay, let's just say that this is one right there, the slope of this line right here would equal two. So I plug in 1, and my slope would equal 2. If I plugged in negative 1, well, now the slope of that line is equal to negative 2. If I plug in 10, if I want to know what the slope is, then x equals 10. Well, now I know the slope is equal to 20. If I plugged in negative 10, I'd get negative 20. Where does the slope equal 5? Okay, this becomes important especially in physics, is you want to know where you are when your speed is equal to 25. So let's just say we want to know where the slope is equal to, well, I'll use 25. So I say slope is equal to 25. 25 is equal to 2x. I'd solve for x, I get 12 and a half. Okay. So that's the way that we go about um, doing slopes. Okay. This is the 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 fundamental basis of how we do calculus. Now, we don't go through this process each time. It's incredibly cumbersome. There are a bunch of shortcuts that we're going to learn, okay? And that's what we're gonna be doing in the next few lectures, okay? But I wanted to give you guys the fundamental basis of how calculus works and why it is, and just to show you that what we're doing here is finding slopes.